For those of you just joining us right now, we have already completed our worship portion of the service, and you may decide, you know what, I want to be part of that. You just need to go to our church website to find the live stream there, and it will be uh, listed here in a little bit. This morning, I want to start out by revealing a few things to those that are new for this church that are watching. For 10 years, Debbie and I have been leading this church, an awesome group of people in a very small town in Washington State. And since we began this church, God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit show up every time we meet. They have spoken to this church through tongues and interpretations. We've recorded every recording or every word that we've had. We have stored them in the cloud so that they're not going to be lost. We have taken great care to walk with God in this church. We have watched God manifest incredible miracles through the people of this church. We've been on the mission field. We've led thousands to the Lord. We have baptized many, many people. And God is about to move in a greater way. It's, I really can't go through the whole story this morning, but you need to know you're tuning into a church that's lit on fire and God has made promises to this church that are just absolutely over the top. We have seers in the church, all the way down to young children that are watching even this morning in the spirit. He, they're watching God on the throne. They're watching Jesus. They're watching Holy Spirit. They're watching the angelic realm. They're watching what's going on around us as a body of people today. You might even find it odd for me to say this, but life isn't quite the way that we think it is. You have a spirit inside of you, and God's able to take that spirit of you and draw you out in the spirit to do and move and sing and dance in heaven while you're here on earth in the physical. You may not sense it. You may not realize it. You may not even think it's true. Oh, I can tell you it's true. This morning, one of our seers texted me and Debbie, and he said this while we were worshiping. He said, this worship is so exciting as I can hear the cry of the people's heart calling out to the Father in desperation. It's a fervent cry, and the tension of the Holy Spirit about to loose over the people is becoming intense. It's almost as if it's about to be released in a great torrent of a huge stream cloud or a storm cloud, the kind where the rain is coming down faster than the water from a faucet. And I know other seers in this church being at home right now are watching in the spirit what's going on. If we receive any text messages before the end of the service, I'll share those. God is going to move. God has given us a word Friday for this church. And I believe, especially for the FT seers that have been with this church for a long time, you are going to be so blown away by the word of, of the Lord that we received. But for those of you that are new, I want you to know something. God knows you personally. Jesus knows you. Holy Spirit knows you. And you might be even living in a country where nothing is really happening, but you've got a fervent heart for God. Maybe deep down you know that you should be a minister. Maybe deep down you know you should be a pastor. Maybe deep down you just want to be a father or a mother or a child that walks with God. You've shown up at the right place. We want to teach you how to walk the way Jesus did. You're going to hear teachings out of this church that are going to line up with the word of God, but they're going to light you on fire to go do the crazy things that God is asking you to do. Maybe in the past you haven't had a source or a place to go to learn. It doesn't do any good to watch YouTube videos of others doing miracles and doing all these great things if they're not teaching you how to do it or how they got to that place so that they could do it. You are going to learn that here. God is going to bless you, and he's going to encourage you. I want to shift gears a little bit here and begin to teach a little bit about what's happening in this time and season on planet Earth. Many in the church are looking as, as along with the government. They're looking along with the government and saying, where did this plague come from? Where did this pestilence come from? America is not partaking in many of the hard things that are happening on the earth in other countries right now. Terrible dust storms, terrible flooding, terrible landslides, fish coming out of the ocean dead, mammals out of the ocean breaching themselves, coming up on the shores, 
volcanoes are more active around the earth today than they ever have been as long as I've been alive. There are so many things happening, earthquakes, rumors of wars, wars. These things were all prophesied by the Lord. They've all been prophesied by the prophets. And we shouldn't be wondering where this is all coming from. I can tell you who's in control, and it's the Lord God Almighty. He's on a throne in heaven, and I can tell you he rules over this earth. He rules over our lives. And I want you to know something this morning. He cares for, and he prospers, and he blesses those that are his. He guards the righteous. He guards those. He protects those that walk with him. He protects those that pray. He protects those that are serving him. He guards over them like a daddy would his own child. But for the rest of the world that doesn't even know about this beautiful father, for the rest of the world that is just getting by and doing the very best they know how to do, they're living in a precarious place. They may be living in poverty and wondering, how come I can't get out of poverty? Well, it's because they're not walking in righteousness. Poverty will cling to a person. I want to share something that I've heard for many, many years, in fact, now decades. I would say for the last 40 years, I've heard a word in the church, and Debbie and I hear it even still today. We hear people talking about the rapture. In fact, today you might be hearing people talking and saying things like, the Lord is going to come soon. The Lord is going to show up soon. In fact, I've been seeing many, many YouTubes, YouTube videos that are professing, you need to wake up, the Lord is coming soon. He is coming soon. But I want to talk about the perspective of soon for you. You see, God is in the business right now of shaking up this planet, and people are determining what their testimony is going to be before the King of Glory. They're either in or they're not. People are being shaken. They're having to make a decision today. God is shaking the earth. The problem with people saying, oh my gosh, I can't wait for rapture to take place and get out of here, that is a self-centered statement from my perspective. That's a person that's not doing anything for the Lord. That's a person that's afraid to step out and walk in the places that God is asking them to do and to be. And those people in a selfish way are saying, I can't wait for rapture. I can't wait to go home. I can't wait to be done with the hardship of this earth. The problem is God is saying this morning, oh, church, if you only knew, my design for you is to raise up, rise up, stand up, and become equipped so that you can take in the last harvest on this earth. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of that. And so when I hear these things, Jesus is coming soon, my first thought is always, well, then get up and do something with it. Get up and tell somebody about the Lord. Somebody prayed for you to get into the kingdom of heaven. Somebody prayed for you and spent time in intercession before God before you came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And God is saying, get up, get busy, and get doing in the same way that people invested in your life. You see, when we pray for others, we change the heart of God and he decides, okay, I'm going to choose that person. And then he makes all the puzzle pieces come together that that person will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Unless God opens the heart of a man to receive the Son, that man will never know the Son. It takes prayer. There are many scriptures in the Word of God that talk about the second coming of Jesus. Jesus talked about the second coming. He taught on it. I want to take you through the Word of God. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, let's turn over to Matthew 24. Why don't we find out what Jesus had to say about the second coming? You see, when a person says the Lord is coming soon, I see two perspectives in that word. It's either a self-centered perspective, I can't wait to get out of here, or we could come into a place of agreement with the word of God where we see all through the Old Testament and we see in the New Testament that word spoken, 
the Lord is coming soon. Jesus even told his disciples that. You see, it's a perspective thing. The first perspective is you don't know if you're going to make it through this day. You don't know if God's going to take you home today. You have no idea. I have met people that knew God was about to take them and they were in perfect health and God took them. But it's very seldom that there's such an intimate walk with God in a Christian's life that God would say, get ready, I'm about to bring you home. But what a walk that would be to hear that type of a word and to know that it's time. How awesome would that be? So the first perspective is maybe today you are going home. Maybe the Lord is coming. Maybe he is coming today to collect you. Maybe he is coming to lead you home, to see your daddy face to face, to be back with your, your family who's gone ahead. The second perspective is the perspective that I want to talk about today, and that's what Jesus said about the second coming. In verse 1, it starts out and it says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Since I was young, I've read that and I've laughed every single time I read that verse. I just find it funny that the disciples, here's this band of men that are following Jesus, and they're now giving him a travelogue guide of the temple. They're, they're now showing Jesus the King of glory, the Son of God, the one that was there at the time of creation, they're showing him the temple. <laughs> and I just wondered if Jesus kind of chuckled. I wonder if he laughed. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. There's a little sentence missing in here, and I, I'm going to speak it out if you don't mind. It should read, and the disciples left without saying a word. In the next verse it says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when, we, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? You have to think about the disciples at this point. They keep hearing Jesus talking about all these wonderful things that are going to take place. And at this point, they believe he is the Messiah. They believe he is the king that's going to rule over Israel. They left him. He, he said, here they want to be the travel guide for Jesus and show him the temple and the outbuildings. And Jesus makes this statement. The next thing you know, they're scratching their heads and walking away. And later they come back and they're full of questions. So you know they left. You know they went and began to talk amongst themselves and asking each other, do you have any idea what he was talking about? And so Jesus was there waiting for them when they came back and they said, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They're speaking a language that they'd already heard these words from Jesus. And now they're repeating them back as they've been taught but they still don't understand them. Here's what Jesus had to say. Take heed that no one deceives you. In this church, I've been teaching the people for 10 years that the word of God is laid out in a hierarchical order. That means there's an order of importance by the speaker. Anytime you hear it or read a scripture that is a list of things, you can also see that there's an order of importance in that list. The Bible's laid out that way all the way through the scriptures. And here we find the very first thing that Jesus talks about is church, disciples. He's speaking to you right now. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by what's going on around you. Do not let the enemy, do not let the demonic realm, do not let the kingdom of darkness deceive you. There is so much going on on the earth right now, people, in the time that we're living in. And God is saying to you, the very first thing out of his son's mouth in front of the disciples was, do not be deceived. Do not always believe everything you hear. It's one of the reasons I keep telling the church to quit watching the news. Yes, I think we should be informed. And yes, I think we should know some of what's going on. But I can tell you, most of, most of it is so filthy and dirty and unclean, and it can cling to you, 
and it can make it into your house and fear is then invited in and anxiousness is then invited in and worry about your future is then invited in. Why would you want that in your house? And Jesus is speaking this morning and he's saying, my people, my church FTC, my beautiful bride, don't take in those dirty, filthy things into your life because they will literally enter into you and into your mind. And God doesn't want that for you. The next thing he said is, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then you will be delivered up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Verse 14 becomes the end of a bookend. If I were to lay these verses that I just read to you, and I set them as books, each verse is a book, and I put bookends on them, you need to know that's been fulfilled and is being fulfilled right now in this hour. We're living in a time right now where there are famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. We're living in a time where nations are rising up against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. You are hearing rumors of wars. You are hearing about wars. And God is saying through his son's word, he's saying, do not. This is not a suggestion. God is saying to you this morning, he's saying, do not be troubled. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. God is saying, if you're going to pray Psalm 91, God is saying this morning, he's saying, if you're going to pray Psalm 91 and you're going to read those words aloud and you're going to make declarations that even thousands of arrows, ten thousands of arrows can fall around you, that the evil and the wicked people will fall around you, that you may be standing in the only place where you're watching plagues and pestilences come to the land and people are falling and collapsing dead. You cannot pray Psalm 91 without realizing that you may actually entertain that in your life. God is saying you've prayed for protection, but don't be surprised when the kingdom of heaven comes against those that walk in evil and wickedness on this earth. We don't have to like it, guys. We don't have to like that the fact like the fact that the people won't turn. We don't have to like that maybe they have never even heard the gospel. I think there's a point where we mourn for those people but it should not be coming to us as a fear or a worry or an anxiety or something that's going to take us out. You should not want it both ways. You should not say to God, I need protection, God. I need your help. I need the blanket of your covering of your mighty wing. And then ask for that and then turn to worry and fear watching all that's going on around you. That would be a double-minded person to do that, and God doesn't really bless double-minded people. He'll either leave you in that worry and that fear, or he's going to watch you stand up as a child of God, a future bride of Jesus Christ, and he's going to watch you grow, and he's going to take care of you in mighty ways. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Today, many are offended with each other. Many will betray one another. Many will hate one another. Debbie and I have been dismayed at how often we've watched this, even in the church. It's here, guys. Jesus talked about this time and season 2,000 years ago. There are many prophets on the earth today deceiving many, many people. There are many prophets on YouTube that are speaking out whatever they feel right to speak out. 
I want to give you a little bit of a, I want to say this to you. The acid test for me when you listen to profits is to really look at the prophets of old that spoke for God. They weren't ooey gooey men that were speaking out love and blessings and God just loves the world and he's gonna just bless everybody and he's gonna put food in your refrigerator. That's not what the prophets were declaring. The prophets were calling the people to repentance. The prophets were calling the people to righteousness. They were telling the people, if you don't get it together, and if you don't start walking right with God, you'll perish. If you don't start repenting and walking with God rightly and laying down your sin, if you don't stop doing the things of the world, God is going to push you out of the way and he'll look for somebody that will walk in righteousness. God has an agenda. God has an agenda on this earth. He has a plan. And I'll tell you one of the greatest plans God has is in raising up a beautiful bride for his son. Jesus deserves it. Think about it. Jesus deserves a, an unblemished bride. He deserves a bride that's going to come through the testings and the trials and the persecutions and the hardship of this life, that it, all of those things actually cleanse us. That's the amazing part about it. Because every time we go through those things, we're crying out on the name of the Lord. And what does he do? He comes and he hugs us and cleanses us with the blood. Every time we come to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me for the sin in my life. Lord, forgive me for doing these vile things before you. And he does. And every time we do, the enemy flees. The enemy's pushed out of us. The blood comes and refreshes us and cleanses those dark areas in our life. God's in the process of building a bride for his son right now. Do not be deceived. In verse 12, it says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. You know, I can only tell you in this perspective that when I look at America, just prior to this pestilence hitting this plague, Debbie and I were blown away by how much lawlessness we see on YouTube. It is awful. It is amazing how many people are doing everything they can to break the law. And I can tell you, God is a righteous judge, and he hates lawlessness. He despises it. And I, I really believe we could even look closely and see that God is taking the lives of people that are living lawlessly before him. I'm not going to name them out today, but I'm watching. And I think you're going to start to see more of it starting to show up as God begins to remove the, the lampstands of people that refuse to walk righteously before him. Jesus in verse 14 said, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Well, what end is he talking about? There is a new bookmark that is waiting out ahead of us right now. And that bookmark that we need to be watching for is the rebuilding of the temple in Israel. When that temple is rebuilt, when that starting of that rebuild takes place, it is going to be a wow. We are going to know that the Lord is coming soon. In verse 4 in 15, he says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, and of course, whoever reads this, let them understand, the Lord is really saying to the church today, you should probably go back and look at the prophetic of Daniel. You should probably know exactly what Daniel spoke about. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation, such has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. 
But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Why is this important to us? Because many people hold to three different views in the church, the pre-tribbers, the mid-tribbers, and the post-tribbers. I can tell you if we were to take a vote in the church today and say, which one are you? The pre-tribbers would win. They wouldn't win the reality of the truth, but they would win the vote. We've already seen here in the scriptures, Jesus is saying, I haven't come and taken the church yet. In fact, in this last verse I just read, it says, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. We are going to walk through the rebuilding of the temple. We are going to watch Satan take the throne of that temple. And we are going to watch the two witnesses come out of heaven and stand in the streets of Israel right in front of the TV cameras and begin to preach heaven. And then we will watch as they are murdered right in the middle of the street. We are going to see crazy things happen in the future. And I believe that future has come. And I believe the rebuilding of that temple could come imminent very soon. You need to know that every utensil, every musical instrument, every piece of that temple has already been set aside. It is not going to take long for that temple to be rebuilt. And I'm guessing that we're going to see that here very soon. Praise God. Then Jesus said, oh, and by the way, if any of you happen to see people crying out, hey, look, there's Jesus, or there, He's saying, don't believe it. That's coming soon, people. You may actually hear those types of things. You may actually hear preachers on YouTube or on Facebook or on their own websites crying out and saying, I, I just found out Jesus is in Israel already. I just heard Jesus is in Africa and he's walking the streets. That seems so ridiculous to us right now. It's going to happen. Jesus says it's going to happen. And he's saying, don't be deceived. He said, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That's you. You might be thinking, who in their right mind would believe any of this? Who in their right mind as one of Jesus' elect could possibly fall for this? Well, I can tell you it's going to happen. You're going to watch pastors teach their churches that Jesus is already here. You're going to watch leaders and very, very um, devout Christians turn their hearts to falsehood. You're going to witness this. You're going to watch this. And it's going to be hard to watch if you're walking in the truth. Jesus said, see, I've told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out and look. Look, he's in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Jesus went on in verse 29 to say, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, that I could share with you this morning what I know about this. I can't, but I will down the road. But you need to know that day is coming, and it's coming quickly. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. So what are you professing today? Are you a pre-tribber? Are you a mid-tribber? Are you a post-tribber? You need to follow the word of God. You cannot declare things and be righteous before God that are not spoken in the word of God. Your testimony becomes what you believe. And your testimony, if it's wrong, will hold you back from doing what God is calling you to do. You need to be right along with the word of God and living it out daily. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. 
When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, that it's at the doors. Why am I teaching this today? I believe with everything in me that we are now in that time in history where we are going to see Matthew 24 come alive. I believe we need to be teaching our children. I believe we need to be telling our neighbors. I believe we need to be telling people in the marketplace, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You're going to see a move from heaven here. You're going to see heaven move against the sin in this world. You need to tell the people. And they don't have to like it. They don't have to like you. But you need to be blameless before God. And you need to tell the people the truth about what's about to happen on this planet. In verse 47, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, Now let me back up. In verse 34, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Jesus is saying, you can take what I'm teaching you to the bank. It is not going to change. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. You need to really understand this. How many denominations are there on the earth today that have been pro professing the day of the return of the Lord by date? And many in the church cling to those things. <gasps> oh, did you hear of what's happening? Jesus is supposed to be back in August. I think it's around the 14th. You need to know that nobody, no man knows when the Lord is coming back. I don't care how great they are with the doctrine of the word of God. I don't care about how they've added up the numbers. I don't care about how they've looked at the Hebrew calendar or the Greek calendar. I don't care about any of that. They cannot know when the Lord is coming back. Impossible. To even speak out those types of things, they're false teachers. They're false witnesses to the word of God. You should turn from when you hear those things. Turn away from it and say, in Jesus' name, I rebuke that word. You don't even want it in you because it creates an environment inside of your mind of confusion. And then you, stop th you start thinking, I don't know what to believe anymore. And the enemy would love it if you started doing that. Just trust the word of God. Jesus went on to say, but as the days of Noah were so, also will the coming of the Son of Man be. What's he saying about that? His disciples were standing or sitting around him, and he's saying, but as the days of Noah, you see, the disciples knew about the days of Noah. And Jesus is making a very strong statement here. For as in the days before the flood, all these people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they didn't even know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. That holds for you and I. I really want you to get this. We could be going about our days and not mindful about the things of heaven, about the kingdom of God. We could get complacent even right now. And man, when he shows up, how awful that would be to realize you weren't even paying attention. And then the most amazing miracle begins to take place here. In verse 40, it says, Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master has made a ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. Oh, I want that for you. And I know the Lord wants that for you too. The Lord is so there with you to encourage you to do the things Holy Spirit is asking you to do, to speak.
the greatest thing you can do in this hour of life is just speak. Tell the people the truth. Yesterday, I talked to a pastor in town, and I was so surprised that here's a man that's standing as a pastor and yet is speaking out things of the world and speaking out in a way that it goes against the word of God. And I listened to this and I was grieved by it. Even in our own town, it's so easy to be deceived, people. Stand on the word of God. Stand on it. Know it. Get it into your heart. Read the word. Study the word. Meditate on the word. Don't rely on me. Don't rely on your neighbor. You have got to be found proven by God that you care enough about the word of God to know the truth for yourself. For surely blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him and at the hour that he's not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. God is making it very clear Wake up, church. God is saying this morning to FTC, and maybe for those of you that are showing up today, maybe you're hearing the unadulterated word of God today, maybe for the first time in a way that you can receive it. God wants you to walk in the fear of the Lord God Almighty. He wants you to tremble at what God can do to your life. He wants you to walk in a way that you're pleasing to him, he wants you to walk in a way that you care about what he thinks. You can live like the world if you want to, but you just heard the word of God, and you just heard what God is going to do to those people that refuse to turn and repent, to do things their own way, whatever seems right. The world is full of those people, and my heart burns for them. Debbie and I, we burn internally, for the salvations of souls on this planet. We don't want anybody to miss out on heaven. We don't want anybody to go to hell. We don't want anybody to have to suffer the way so many multitudes are already suffering in that terrible place. I want to encourage you this morning. God spoke to one of our people this this weekend on Friday, this person got a word from God and when I read it, I just was weeping. The Lord loves this church. He loves Debbie and I and he loves you. He loves this church body. He's seen what we've gone through. He's seen the trials and the tribulations. He's seen the hardship people. He's also watched your pastor get up in front of the church for many years telling you that God's about to move. And many of the people just couldn't wait any longer and left. And you haven't. And God is so well pleased. God is looking at a faithful body. And I want you to hear what he has to say to this church. And you may be a visitor today. It is not a mistake that you're about to hear the word of the Lord come over this church if you're with us today, it's because God wants you to hear this word. Here is the word of the Lord for you. I am the Spirit. I am the Holy Spirit. I flood over the multitudes. I am the flood, the flow in, out of people's lives as they choose to follow me. Do you allow me? Yes. There is a time and a season in which I'm about to pour out over the earth. Pour as I am a great flood for people to become revived and rejuvenated. Are you ready? This is the beginning of the great revival over America. The flood is about to pour. Are you ready, dear child? 
open the heavens. Let it rain. Plant the seeds. Child, goodness, you do not understand the depths of which our Father is going to move. He loves this generation and knows the hearts that are currently prepared for him to move. People calling out, Lord, Lord, for so long, crying for the Father to move among the people. Believe that the day is here. It's upon you. It is here. More bricks to be moved. The water is tumultuous. The water is breaking against the wall, tumbling, ready to drench the earth, ready to flood over the people. I am the flood. Are you ready? Be prepared. I'm going to change one sentence, maybe a couple sentences here, so I don't reveal who this word came from. But it's the Holy Spirit said, Sweet person, the day is upon you in this church. Your lives are forever changed. Promises are going to come to pass, promises to come about, hope completed, miracles, healings, promises are going to be complete. I am the great flood. I am about to break through. Be prepared. Call forth the seeds to germinate. Call forth the seeds to lift their heads from the grave. Faith Tabernacle is about to come forth to become the front lines of this upcoming incredible battle. Again, I'm not going to declare who this is, was written to besides the church. Then the Holy Spirit said, Be spiritually prepared as you don't understand what is coming. Enter into my Holy of Holies on a daily basis. And that's all I can say here. But I'm going to go ahead and add to it because it's the heart of God. This church is about to shine. This church is about to break open the heavens and release the flood. Be prepared. Does that encourage you? Does that encourage you? I'm curious, have you got your fingers in your ears right now and it's just another statement from the pastor about what God's about to do? Or does this make you like... I think this is about to happen. I think what we're hearing is about to happen. Where are you at right now? God doesn't want this to be just another word. God is saying this morning, I want you to stand up and get going and shake off the dust. And I want you to become so vocal in who you are and the presence of the Holy Spirit to be coming out of you in waves over the dry land. He said, call in the seeds. Call them up, call them up, call them up so that they can lift their heads up out of the grave. Well, then you need to speak it out. You can't just hear the word and go on with your days, guys. Those days are over. When you hear a prophetic word, you need to start exercising the prophetic. Why don't we do that? Stand up right now, will you? The Lord just said to me, oh, if they only understood how their lives are going to be so transformed. Lift up your holy hands and come into agreement with this word that we got from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you have told us that you're about to flood over the multitudes, that you are the flood, that you are the one that flows in and out of our lives. That a season has come when you're about to pour out over the earth. You're about to re revive your people and rejuvenate your people. And yes, we are ready. And Lord, you are telling us through the Holy Spirit that there is going to be a great revival over America. And that there's a flood that's about to pour out of heaven. And yes, we are ready. And so we declare this morning, God, we declare this morning, Jesus, we declare this morning, Holy Spirit, open the heavens, let it rain. And Lord, we cast seeds out of our hands right now over all the lands that we stand on. We release these seeds, God, over all the areas that you've placed us, God, that these seeds would be germinated. And Father, we ask that you'd water them and prepare them. And I believe, unlike the days of old, these things are going to grow so fast, God. Lord, 
the days of us calling out, Lord, Lord, and wondering if you're ever going to do anything or over for us because today we believe that day is here. We believe the day is upon us. We know that you're about to tell this church to remove more bricks on that wall. We know that that water that's tumultuous is going to start breaking over that wall and break the wall down, tumbling those huge, huge blocks. We know that you're ready to drench the earth with this water. We know that you're ready to flood over your people. And we know that you are the flood. You've asked us, are we ready? Are we prepared? We are ready. And I'm hoping the people watching today have been doing something to get prepared because they've been warned for years. You tell us, Holy Spirit, that the day is upon us in this church. We believe. You tell us that our, our lives will never be the same again. We believe. You tell us that the promises that you've spoken over this church and into our lives personally are going to come to pass. We believe. You tell us that our faith is the substance of things hoped for, and you're telling us that, that our hopes are going to be completed. We believe. We also believe that miracles and healings and the promises of these things are coming to pass now, not someday in the future. You've told us that you're the great flood, that you're about to break through, and to be prepared, we will. And we are calling forth those seeds to germinate now, in Jesus' name. Let them come into their fullness now, in Jesus' name. You've asked us to call forth the seeds to lift their heads from the grave. We call forth those seeds right now in the name of Jesus to lift their heads from the grave. And Lord, you declared through the Holy Spirit that Faith Tabernacle Church is going to come forth, spring forth, and we believe and we thank you for that, Lord. You've also told us that we're going to become part of the front line of this upcoming incredible battle on the earth as Satan raises up against the church. We believe and we are ready to stand in that fight, Lord. We don't understand what's coming, God. You haven't shown us completely. And you've asked us to step into the Holy of Holies on a daily basis. Forgive us for not doing that, God. And I ask, Lord, that today you would instill in the hearts of your people that every single day they step into the Holy of Holies. You've said that our families, the church body, is about to shine. We believe. You've also stated that this church is going to break open the heavens and release the flood. We believe. And the Lord is saying, be prepared. Don't wait for something to happen. God is saying, be prepared. Be prepared. You need to go to him and say, what's my part? What do I need to be doing in preparation for what you are about to do? I can tell you, if you keep putting this off, you'll watch the others doing the work of God and you'll be standing on the sidelines. God's not playing with this church. God's not playing with you right now. This is all about his son. This is all about what he wants to do on this earth to revive a nation so that we can revive a world and prepare a bride for the Son of God. Be blessed. You have a pastor that loves you and adores you and cares about your life. Debbie and I pray for you every single day. You have intercessors that are on their faces in the carpet for you, for your life. And as new people are gathering up on this stream, we're going to be including them in the prayers as well. Lives are about to change. I see a person watching that's never been on this stream before right now. And I'm telling you, God has not forgotten about you. In fact, God's showing you right now how important you really are. So get prepared. Prepare your hearts for what God is about to do. And Lord, let it be in Jesus' name. Amen.